Acting roles seem so glamorous. Having a part in a movie or show can almost look like being knighted with a special title that will never fade. What the general crowd forgets is they're a job. Actors might have to take a job they don't want because it pays well. They may not connect to the character. They may hate the way the franchise they're part of develops. Whatever the reason, parts they were once glad to get can turn into one that an actor wishes nothing more than to get out of. Keep watching to learn about actors who hated their roles. Jamie Foxx Actors aren't always allowed to voice their full opinions about a movie at first. Their true feelings often don't come out until years later. Jamie said he had to talk up the 2005 sci-fi movie Stealth while promoting it. He admitted, quote, Sometimes you do a movie and you have to go promote it. So on Stealth, I was like, yeah, this is the greatest. And people would see me after seeing the movie and say, I can't believe you lied to me like that. He revealed this during his promotional tours for 2007's The Kingdom. That tour was a relief because he could finally speak the virtues of a movie he actually liked. Alec Guinness Star Wars fans beware. Have you ever dreamed of being part of the mega franchise? Certain actors who were found it to be a nightmare. Alec Guinness was one of them. It didn't help he wasn't a fan of sci-fi to begin with. He also hated the plots and dialogue of Star Wars. His displeasure with his role as Obi-Wan grew as the franchise became more and more popular and overshadowed his other work. He said, I shrivel inside each time it's mentioned. Twenty years ago, when the film was first shown, it had a freshness, also a sense of moral good and fun. Then I began to be uneasy at the influence it might be having. Michelle Pfeiffer the hit musical Grease is high on the list of movies that didn't need a sequel. That didn't stop filmmakers from hyping it up. Most of its cast was disgusted by the results, including Michelle Pfeiffer. She considered it an embarrassing career blip, but claims she was too young to know any better. She said, quote, I hated that film with a vengeance and could not believe how bad it was. Channing Tatum What's worse, an unnecessary sequel or an unnecessary live-action adaptation? Channing Tatum dealt with and hated the latter. On Howard Stern's radio show, he spoke about G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra. I'll be honest, I fucking hate that movie. You do? Uh, <laughs> why do you hate that movie? I hate that movie. I, so I was pushed into doing that movie. I just, I, it, the script wasn't any good. And, and, I, and I was like, I don't want to do something that, like, I, one, I'm a fan of since I was a kid. I watched it every morning, like, growing up. And no. I didn't want to do something that I thought was, one, bad. And two, I just didn't know if I want to be G.I. Joe. Matt Damon. The Bourne series was Matt's big break. That didn't mean he had to like every entry. The third film, The Bourne Ultimatum, is considered by many to be the strongest in the franchise. Matt is one of the few that thinks it's the worst. His major problem with it is Tony Gilroy's screenplay. Matt thought the material was sloppy, despite how much money it earned. He said, quote, I don't blame Tony for taking a boatload of money and handing in what he handed in. It's just that it was unreadable. This is a career ender. I mean, I could put this thing up on eBay and it would be game over for that dude. It's terrible. It's really embarrassing. He was having a go, basically, and he took his money and left. Robert Pattinson Robert can't stand the Twilight series that made him famous. He was turned off from the beginning and thrashed the books. His attempts to change the movie failed. He continually bashes them and his character, Edward Cullen. He said, When I read it, it seemed like it, wasn't, it was like it was a book that wasn't supposed to be published. It was so long. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah and, and we were shooting ever. If Edward was not a fictional character, you just met him in, in reality. You know, he's one of those guys who'd be like an axe murderer. When you, when you put it the bare facts out, he tells I've ah. killed 40 or 50 people. And uh, he's like, you really shouldn't. And I, I want to kill you so much. Every single day, every moment I'm with you, I desperately wanted to kill you. And she's like, I don't care. I love you. And it's like, well, <laughs> there's definitely something wrong with her. And there's very obviously something wrong with me. Ryan Reynolds. If there's any actor who's more vocal about a hated role than Robert Pattinson, it's Ryan Reynolds. His role in 2011's Green Lantern is well known. He hated it so much that he didn't watch it all the way through until a decade later. He roasted it on Twitter after. It even became part of his fourth wall breaking Deadpool persona. Halle Berry. Halle had high hopes for Catwoman after a failed James Bond movie spinoff about Jinx failed to get green lit. She hoped the film would finally be the chance to show a woman of color becoming a capable superhero. She knew from the beginning that the plotline was too silly but had little say over it. Her worst fears were confirmed when the film became an infamous flop. The film even won a Razzie in 2005 and she made her distaste for it known at the ceremony. She said in her acceptance speech, First of all, I want to thank Warner Brothers. 
thank you for putting me in a piece of shit god awful movie. You know, it was just what my career needed, you know? I was at the top, and then Catwoman just plummeted me to the bottom. George Clooney. Few characters are as well known and well loved as Batman. Few films in the franchise are as universally hated as 1997's Batman and Robin. George knows he couldn't have saved it no matter what he did. He said it was a difficult film for any actor to be good in. He thought he'd quote whiffed it so much that he'd killed Batman. Kate Winslet Titanic was the highest grossing film of all time until James Cameron one-upped himself with Avatar. That doesn't mean all the cast thought it was worth the money. Kate doesn't hate the film, but thinks it was one of her worst performances. She said, quote, Every single scene, I'm like, really? Really? You did it like that? Oh my god. Even my American accent, I can't listen to it. It's awful. Hopefully, it's so much better now. It sounds terribly self-indulgent, but actors do tend to be very self-critical. I have a hard time watching any of my performances, but watching Titanic, I was just like, oh god, I want to do that again. Mark Wahlberg Sometimes one actor is fortunate enough to get out of a flop while another isn't. Mark said on a press tour for The Fighter that Amy Adams was the lucky one. She avoided the M. Night Shyamalan flop, The Happening, while he did not. There's one flop that has the devout Catholic literally begging for forgiveness from God. He said, quote, I just always hope that God is a movie fan and also forgiving because I've made some poor choices in my past, Wahlberg said. Boogie Nights is up there at the top of the list. Christopher Plummer Musicals seem like they'd always be a cheery experience to make, but that's not always true. Christopher Plummer did not enjoy his time on The Sound of Music, which he unaffectionately called The Sound of Mucus. First of all, he didn't feel connected to his character. He said, quote, Although we worked hard enough to make him interesting, it was a bit like flogging a dead horse. He also didn't find any interest in the story. He called it, quote, So awful and sentimental and gooey, you had to work terribly hard to try and infuse some minuscule bit of humor into it. He eventually realized its merits years later, but it took decades. Tyler Perry Actors can even hate roles they created themselves. Tyler fashioned Medea after seeing the success of Eddie Murphy, Snutty Professor. He was expecting it to be a one-off gag, but Medea turned into a $2 billion franchise. That meant a lot of painful work for him. Becoming Medea wasn't as easy as it looked. He had to wear a fat suit and speak in a high-pitched voice all day. The work eventually felt like it wasn't worth any amount of money. It's not surprising he eventually had to kill the franchise off. Now it's time to hear from you. Which acting role do you think you would hate if you were somehow able to get it? Let us know in the comments section below.